Good evening and welcome. My name is Jamie Humphrey. I'm the scientific co-chair for the Brainton, Sarasota area BioFlorida chapter. I'm here with Lauren from Osprey Biotechnics. Could you tell me about your company, Lauren? Sure. We have um, been in Sarasota since 1990 as Osprey Biotechnics. We actually started here in Sarasota in 1967 as MicroLife Technics, but we were in Michigan prior to that starting the company in 1963. And currently we make beneficial bacteria for environmental applications. So we grow bacteria at our factory uh, that's beneficial in a number of applications. We sell products all the way from drain maintenance products that could be used in a residential setting septic products for the residential setting or the commercial kitchen setting. Uh, we have products that go into agriculture in uh, animal feed as direct fed microbials, into aquaculture to help clean the water and as probiotics for the fish. It helps to uh, increase the survivability and decrease mortality of the larval stage of fish. Um, and there we're working on some projects with Moat Marine here locally. Uh, we have projects that are biofertilizers. Um, we have products that go into um, the ground and are used for soil and groundwater cleanup of pollutants in the environment. So um, that's just in a nutshell what we do. And um, is your company growing f uh, more rapidly now there's more of a strong movement away from harsh chemicals to more biologically eco-friendly way solutions. Yes, absolutely. We have been expanding in the direct fed microbial area where um, companies are trying to become antibiotic free in poultry and different um, uh, animals that would be used for meat products. Um, and in agriculture, in plant health, uh, where they're trying to get away from chemicals or reduce chemicals and reduce the um, products that are left behind uh, from the chemicals. And an event like this, this BioFlorida chapter event, how important is that to your company? Well, it's important. We uh, want to support BioFlorida because we think BioFlorida is a great organization. We've been members for a number of years and um, Sarasota has quite a lot in the area of biotech and has grown and attracted biotech. Uh, as we know, we've been here for, for a long time, and um, so we want to help to promote that as well as to promote uh, biotech in the Sarasota area. And now I'm with Robert from Airgas. Robert, can you tell us what the importance of an event like this being held locally for your company is and can you tell us about the comp your company and the services it provides? Sure, Air Gas USA LLC uh, deals with specialty medical and industrial gases. We're the largest distributor of gases in the United States and this is a very important event for us because it gives us a lot of exposure and helping all the different departments, uh, all the science departments with their requirements. As a vendor, how important is it to get the one-on-one -on -one face time with the scientists, your end users, as opposed to trying to go cold calling? It's very important because you get to understand the requirements that they have and they need, and you're able to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. And what would you say is the thing that makes your company stand out from the others? I think it's we're, we're a national company, but we have a deep local presence, and we deal with all gases, specialty, medical, industrial, and also equipment. So we do a little bit of everything. And Robert, could you tell me, or tell our viewers, what types of gases? Could you be sort of a little, little bit more specific, please? Sure, we deal with all the gases, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, cryogenic gases, uh, pressurized gases, uh, lecture bottles, any type of gas that you need, we carry it. Hi Al, could you um, tell us a bit about your company and 
what your company does. Okay, I'm with Triumvirate Environmental. We offer comprehensive environmental services, uh, including audits, management of waste inventory, uh, other environmental services, packaging materials, waste materials for transportation and proper disposal. And what's the importance of a, an event like tonight's BioFlorida event for your company? Well, it's a great networking event where we can get a chance to talk to a lot of people in the life sciences field, the healthcare, and uh, the colleges and universities. And who are your biggest customers? Is it life sciences or is it hospitals, managed care facilities? Who is the most important for people for you? Well, really, they're all important. Uh, if you look at uh, currently in Florida, the uh, uh, higher education, the uh, colleges and universities have been a, a mainstay for us, but uh, we're always looking for life science opportunities and also in the healthcare industry. And what do you think the importance of an uh, uh, organization like BioFlorida is for the industry? Well, I think it's very important in attracting uh, growing companies to supporting them as they grow and uh, looking for uh, chances to help accelerate their growth. Oh, thank you. I'm now with uh, Thermo Fisher, uh, with a couple of their representatives, Josh and Sean. Sean, can you tell me a bit about your company and what they do? Yes, we provide solutions for scientific problems in, across from you know, medical care to scientific research, and that branches into environmental and so forth. I cover the laboratory consumables, which are most of the plastics that are seen in research labs. And um, what's the importance of an event like this to you? Uh, it, it's all networking, meeting people, understanding what they're doing here in the state of Florida, which is my whole territory, um, and how we can work together, find products that fit their needs and so forth. All right, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Josh, um, can you tell me what you do in Thermo Fisher? Yes, I am the local molecular biology specialist for Thermo Fisher Scientific, so I support all molecular applications for Thermo Scientific. Uh, we're really into PCR, real-time PCR. We're getting into next generation sequencing that's being used for personalized medicine right now as well. Okay, so does that mean you get into the genomics side of things as well? Absolutely, we're big into genomics, so the, again, the, the next generation sequencing is really one of the big things right now, and figuring out you know, at a tumor level how my DNA is different from your DNA, and you know, being able to get that data quickly, we're really working on that right now. And what's the importance of an event like tonight for you? Again, networking, you know, learning about the local biotechs that we may not get to have the exposure to on a daily basis, especially for someone like myself who covers the entire southeastern U.S. So I have a, a, lot of, a lot of square miles and only two feet on the street for me. So this is really good to see a lot of people in a short amount of time. All right, thank you very much. And now I'm with Leslie Earp. Uh, she's the Fisher Scientific representative for this area. Leslie, can you tell me something about your customer base? Uh, my customer base is mostly in the research marketplace. For example, University of South Florida, Ross Camp Institute, Moffitt Cancer Center. And what's the importance of events like this to you? Well, Fisher Scientific is very active with the BioFlorida organization, and we've partnered up with them in which we help new startup life science companies outfit their laboratories. So we can outfit anywhere from the lowly test tube to a bottle of acetonitrile to a mass spec, any kind of equipment you could think of in the way of the laboratory need. And have you seen the local biotech market grow in uh, recent years? Oh, just recently this area is just blossoming and it, it's phenomenal and it's wonderful to see something like that come to this area in Florida. And how long have you been with Fisher Scientific? Oh my goodness, I've been with Fisher for, um, for about 29 years now. Yeah, it's been a good job. I've really enjoyed it and just to see what science has done and the development in laboratories and what folks are doing. It's a lot of fun to meet people and see what they're doing as well. And 
As, as a seasoned rep, um, what are the biggest changes you've seen in the industry? Um, probably just the in-depth research that folks are doing and what they're pursuing. Oh, thank you very much. And now I'm with Tracy, who's with Fisher Chemical. Tracy, the Fisher Company seems to be a very large company. Is it a full service company? Absolutely. We have 50,000 employees across the globe, and we service international customers as well as U.S. And, well, basically every country on the planet, we service their chemicals and their scientific needs. As a big multinational company, what's the importance for you to get to small local events like this where you can meet the lab techs, the people who work in the labs opposed to just the purchasing agents? Sure, we absolutely want to connect with our customers because we find that's the best way to serve the scientific community. I'm now with Jane Filesticker, Jane Filesticker with State College of Florida. She was in instrumental in developing the Biotech Associates degree program. Jane, could you tell us the importance of a BioFlorida event like this where the students can access um, vendors and meet with scientists? Oh, absolutely. Our, our students are actually on assignment here. They are required to collect at least two business cards from ben vendors because these vendors are their potential employers. They are also learning a little bit more about the business and having an opportunity to interact with and network with um, all different aspects of people participating in the business. Excellent. And can you tell me, ha have you noticed more interest from employers in your education programs where you're grooming potential employees for the future? Yes, absolutely I have. I've noticed the local employers want to talk to us about the exact skills that they want to have in their employees and we're more than happy to tailor make training programs for that. And I think also the economic development councils have been interested in what it is that we're doing and are using the fact that we have an employable workforce co uh, collection of potential employees for them so that if they were to move a biotechnology company here, they can uh, hit the ground running, so to speak, with our students who are already trained. That's excellent. And what's the enrollment like for the biotech program? Is there an enthusiastic response from the students? Oh, absolutely. It's actually one of the fastest growing programs at the college. After its second year, uh, after inception, we were up to over 100 students in it. So we are really rolling in gangbusters. That's great. We're growing local talent for local jobs. Fantastic. Thank you. Hi, this is Michael Van Butzel, business co-chair of BioFlorida Sarasota. We're here at the event tonight, and we're talking to some of the exhibitors that have their tables. And that tonight, we're going to talk to SRQ Bio, to John Reed. What is SRQ Bio? SRQ Bio is a spin-off organization of the Roskamp Institute, and we focus on contract research and contract synthesis of small molecules uh, up to small proteins. Uh, for example, organizations can approach us if they'd like in-house clinical work, uh, as well as developing preclinical models and, and rodent samples. A lot of times people have a drug or a compound that might be of therapeutic use, but they have no way to bring it to the market. They have no way to build in the value that's needed to take it to the FDA and apply for clinical trials. And that's where, as a four-contract entity, we can help build value into that, either through doing pharmacokinetic studies, where we monitor the presence of a drug in the blood or in target organs of different animals, or even in clinical studies. We can do metabolism studies, and we can do in-house testing for certain markers of the disease. Uh, and all that we can do under one roof. So we're very fortunate to have that kind of, or excuse me, we're very, very fortunate to have that kind of suite of equipment uh, encapsulate all under one place. A lot of times, uh, these organizations will focus on one area only, whereas we're able to go sort of soup to nuts, if you will. But why is this event so important to uh, SRQ Bio? Well, having an event like this where we can network with other organizations within Florida and find out the needs of the client is almost crucial. I mean, for any business, you have to know what the customer wants if you're going to survive. And we have to know what the customer wants, too, if we can help build value. If we have to adapt our model to suit theirs, that's something we can do. But the only way to do that is to talk to people 
uh, beyond you know a one or two sentence uh, introductory email. The ability to stand next to somebody and have a conversation, it, the value can't be understated. And so to have this is, is a real boon to the industry. Because before this, this sort of thing didn't happen in Florida. John, what are some of the areas in science where you are focusing the SRQ bio business? Uh, the, the, in, the interests of the uh, company are split up over several areas of science. So we have analytical chemistry, and that is doing quality control either from somebody's compound at the, at the API stage, that is the active pharmaceutical ingredient, all the way through a formulated mixture that we can do stability studies. If somebody comes to us and wants to see how, how stable their product is over a span of time, we can do that. We can do impurity analysis. We can do bioanalytical if we want to see the compound uh, in, in, in human samples or in rodent samples. Another area of focus we have is synthetic chemistry. So if somebody comes to us and they approach us with a molecule they want made, the molecule isn't available publicly, it's never been synthesized before. You come to us and we can approach our chemist and he can lay out a, what should be a feasible synthetic route and produce that, and produce that to a scale where they can at least do some preclinical work uh, and take them up to a certain level of purity too, sometimes up, as, up through say a phase one uh, FDA trial. Uh, other, oh, sorry, uh, and lastly too we have uh, on site, we have a, a vivarium where we can house several thousand animals for these preclinical studies, as well as an in-house clinic, too. So we can, uh, with, with a, a board-certified neurologist in-house, uh, we can focus on CNS disorders, and we also have several nurses, too, that can run these trials. Uh, we've done them for several large organizations, and we continue to do them, too. So we've already met the standard that they require to do these kind of studies and make them compliant with the FDA regulations. And now I'm with Stephen Miles, Provost New College. Uh, Dr. Miles, can you tell me the importance of an event like this for New College and its students? Oh, it's tremendously important. Um, one thing that we've learned at New College is that as strong as our program is, it's the connections to other institutions and the flow of our students and faculty to and from those institutions that really makes it. Um, I think all of us are here because uh, we work together and want to grow the pie for research and to strengthen the economy in this area. And what do you think the importance is from the industry standpoint to see what's happening in the educational field at the moment? Well, certainly um, from the standpoint of New College, we're, we are a baccalaureate institution. But I think people are always amazed when they see the quality of the work that our students do. Certainly with Roskamp, uh, you're very familiar with all of the uh, senior theses that have come from the research there, uh, but also to see the quality of our faculty. And what's exciting now is that the faculty from the different institutions in this area are um, working together as they've never worked before. It's really exciting. And what do you feel the potential economic impact to the area is of developing the life science industry, in particular trying to get students employed locally in the industry? Well, I think we just saw a um, letter to the editor in the Sarasota Hill Tribune that's talking about our most expensive export, uh, which is high school graduates. Um, what our graduates, the students in Sarasota and Bradenton need to see is that there's a vibrant industry here, uh, that there's an educational corridor that serves their needs, that, uh, that they don't have to leave the state, they don't really even have to leave the area. So I think the employers are certainly looking for how the educational component is going to solidify their employer base. The overall impact of New College in the community, I've always felt has been understated. What do you think New College needs to do in the future to get the name out there for people to understand they have some of the best students in the country here? Right. Well, I think uh, part of it is uh, being more vocal about the accomplishments and also about the varied accomplishments. I think if you stop people on the street, maybe they've heard of the fact that we have uh, a record number of Fulbrights, right, that um, our student body constitutes less than 1% of the total enrollment in the state of Florida and the state, in the state university system, but we produce 30% of the Fulbrights in the state university system. That's one accomplishment. But looking at um, the record of our students going on to top graduate schools, that's important. Um, actually, one of the things that I think is going to really change is we've just established a center for engagement and opportunity, which in one sense has a career piece, but also has a very strong internship piece. 
And I think as our students are engaged in more internships in the community, um, people will see what you've seen at Roscamp, which is that we have the, some of the best students in the country. So it's getting them out there, and I think the students will speak for us. And as a employer of some of those interns, I can attest to the quality of the students. They are truly world class. Dr. Miles, thank you. Sure, thank you. Hi, this is Michael Van Butzel, Chair, Business Chair of Bio Florida, Sarasota. We're here tonight at the Business uh, Biotech Expo, and we're going to be interviewing some of the guests. We'd like to introduce Rick Hall, ACC Hall International. Hi, Michael. It's great to be here from Miami. Uh, I, I think you're really doing a great job at organizing the uh, chapter up here. Well, thank you, Rick. I understand that you have uh, held several leadership positions in Bio Florida across the state. That's right. I was a founding member of Bio Florida, uh, and I was a board member for 13 years. I ran the membership committee for five years, and uh, I know how tough it is to, to get a meeting like this together, and you're doing an excellent job. Well, we're glad that you're here, Rick, uh, but I also understand you're here for business reasons as well. My business is, uh, we have a program called BioInsure, where we specialize in handling the insurance for products liability, clinical trials, directors and officers liability. Uh, we work with startup companies to large companies. And uh, for me, it's a networking opportunity to meet some of the companies here. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very nice casual format to, uh, to get to meet, know people and, and understand the business. What are some of the focuses of the other chapters across the state that you've seen over the years as BioFlorida has developed? Well, networking has always been one of the focuses, but education is, uh, is one of the other focus to, uh, to bring uh, you know, information on the FDA and, and, and raising capital and uh, marketing and uh, you know, international marketing. That's uh, another focus. Well, as you've watched the business grow across the years, what, is it, what has been the role of BioFlorida? Well, it's still the, the statewide organization to foster the development of, of uh, life sciences. And, uh, and you know, all that's important is, one, creating an awareness of this business, that it's a really a great business to be in. There's a lot of business in Florida. People don't recognize that. They think of uh, Disney and uh, tourists. but. Um, this is a, 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 a one of you know Florida's one of the third largest states if you add up all the business here in the country. So we should promote that, and uh, this should be a location for companies to come. And uh, but capital formation is one of the problems. Capital likes to go to California and Boston. It doesn't really recognize Florida, so we need capital. We need a lot of investment for this business to grow, and then talent. Talent. Uh, you know, we got, we're working on talent. There's not as much talent here, but like uh, new, new college here is helping. And uh, little by little, all the colleges are getting programs, turning out students to help that industry. Well, we're sure glad you came tonight, Rick, and we uh, look forward to seeing you further, and thanks for coming. Thank you. Hi, this is Michael Van Betzel at the uh, Biotech Expo, and we have Karen Stewart with the Economic Development Department of uh, Manatee. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and great to see all these cool biotech companies and seeing everybody networking and talking about how to grow their business in Manatee County. Has there ever been an event like this held in uh, the area? Uh, not to my knowledge. I am experienced in business expos, and I don't think I've ever been to one where there's been so many biotech companies uh, in one location, you know, talking about a lot of cool things and innovative products and that kind of thing. We have the, uh, the science posters, and we also have the uh, exhibit tables. Uh, what do you see different at this event? Well, what I see is um, a lot of people are interested in talking. Not too many tchotchkes to take home because we don't need any more of that kind of stuff, but just solid information about what's going on in the biotech world in our region. 
How do the life sciences fit within the overall business model of Manatee and the Sarasota area? Well, life sciences is a targeted industry sector through Enterprise Florida and the Department of Economic Opportunity with Florida, and that trickles right down to um, our own targeted industry sectors in Manatee and Sarasota County. We're looking to increase the sector, help any way we can through our robust incentive programs, our connection with the EDC and resources for these kinds of businesses, and then our expedited permitting. One of the areas that this event is supposed to cover is the academic infrastructure in the area. Can you kind of highlight some of the, the organizations and the academic institutions that will be seen here tonight? Well, University of South Florida, New College, uh, State College of Florida. I'm sure we have folks here from Kaiser and some of the other um, institutions. And we're happy to see everyone here from the higher education because we work closely with them in developing the workforce of the future. We understand that there are several new uh, instructors and faculty that's joining the academic area. What does that mean for future growth for businesses? Well, you know, whenever we have a trained workforce in a certain sector, uh, the knowledge that that workforce exists in a region helps bring companies here to, to utilize the workforce. Usually when a company chooses to locate someplace, it's because they're close to uh, a ready labor force, trained and t uh, trained talent pool, and because they're also located near their markets and their vendors and suppliers. Well, we will thank you for coming this evening, and we look forward to future events. Great, thank you. We're here tonight at the Biotech Expo at New College, and we're talking to one of our major sponsors this evening from the Kiwanis Bradenton. We're welcoming Dave Grantham, who has supported this organization. And Dave, why was it important for Qantas to support the life sciences? Well, Mike, the, uh, our, our, our club has a long history of providing scholarships to uh, seniors in high school. Uh, and uh, when we heard about this opportunity to keep students local, uh, provide their education through SCF, through USF, uh, uh, Sarasota Manatee, New College, uh, it just seemed like a natural fit for us. We, we want to keep students local. We'd love for our money to, to the, that we provide for scholarships to stay in our community uh, for the long haul. Well, that's super. Now, how did you find out about this program? Well, we've had Ross Camp in, Jamie specifically, uh, come in and speak to us a couple of times at Kiwanis, and uh, that's how we the, the relationship developed. Now, how large of an organization do you have in Bradenton? We've currently got 125 members uh, and growing, and uh, we're in our new home at Manatee Players, uh, or the Manatee Performing Arts Center downtown. So uh, we're a growing organization and really looking for new opportunities to get involved and, and, as I said earlier, keep our students local. Well, the support of the life sciences in the Bradenton, Sarasota area crosses all kinds of organizations, even including the Kiwanis. Well, I think the life sciences, particularly the biotech program at the State College of Florida is something that I'm very proud of that is so needed in our community. And I think one of the things that was said earlier this evening was a discussion about how important it was for us to provide opportunities for students in our area and work together as educational institutions so that individuals can get the education they're looking for, can meet the needs of employers by making their way through the State College of Florida to New College to USF, and we're all working together to make that happen. We're part of the educational sort of portfolio here. We've, we've got an enormous resource in the number of institutions we have. There's a real need in the area um, for our students and for what they would do. And um, we've got tremendous resources. We've got a location that's unmatched. We've got employers that are calling out for um, talent. And so this is highly important to us. It's also really cutting edge um, what's going on here. I think there are a lot of different needs. We, we want to take the cue from employers in our area, what the needs are in our community, and we're working very hard to listen to those individuals and find out where are we going to get the best um, investment by working together as institution and meet those needs. So right now I can't tell you that we have one thing on the radar scope. We're looking at all things because we, again, want to make sure that we are doing what's in the best interest of our community and our students. We need our students to be able to move from institution to institution, 
but the education they get is only as good as the people that's providing that education. And I think um, together we can attract people um, to this area, um, and they often come in pairs these days, so you can get people, um, one half of a partnership is at SEF, another half is at New College. We, same with the research institutions. We have together, we have a real way of drawing talent to the area to help educate our future talent. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael, Michael Van Butzel. I am the business co-chair of BioFlorida, Sarasota, Bradenton chapter. That's a mouthful. But we started the formation of this chapter earlier this year, and this is going to be our signature event for the year, introducing the Biotech Expo. The Expo is the first but it's going to be one of many. We plan on continuing this event, and in view of the great response, the response to the exhibitors, to the posters, and to your attendance this evening, we will continue and we will hold it again next year, and it will be bigger and it will be larger because the business's biotech is growing in Sarasota and Bradenton. The organization of BioFlorida is the Business Industry Association of Life Sciences. We touch private institutions, private companies, public universities, state colleges, all kinds of educational sources, and that is what is represented here this evening. And we welcome you. We want to acknowledge our sponsors for this evening, for they help make this happen. We first would like to recognize New College of Florida for offering this incredible setting. I hoped when you saw the first photograph of our flyer, you, you decided, I don't care what they're talking about, I'm going there to check this out. Because it's beautiful, and we want to thank you for being such great hosts for our event. We also would like to recognize Bright House Networks and Kiwanis as our premier sponsors. We like to also recognize Lakewood Ranch Commercial Realty as one of our sponsors, as well as Gents Immigration Law Firm and the company that I represent, DPR Construction. And you might ask, what in the world is a construction company doing in a nice place like this? And the reason is, is that we build the places where you work. We build the labs, we build the classrooms, and we build the hospital settings. What is good for our industry is good for our business. The organization of BioFlorida is made up of, typically for each chapter, a business chair and a scientific chair. And the success of this chapter is clearly tied to the dedication of Ross Camp Institute and James Humphrey as my scientific chair. And I want to thank you and the entire leadership team for your efforts. We'd like to recognize, and I'm going to call off the leadership team so you see what kind of a rich mix we have from the business of life sciences. We have Pat Abbott from Venture Forward Partners. She helps small biotech companies and their startup. You have Kirk Boylston from Lakewood Ranch Commercial Realty. They are very interested in attracting new business to the ranch. You have Mary Chilton from the Bradenton EDC. You have Jason Gaskill, attorney with Adams and Reese, intellectual properties. You have Melody Janchek from PSI Engineering, Jennifer Jensen from Roe Brady Design, and Bob Karnick from Roe Brady Design. And the welcome loop that you saw this evening was designed by Ro Brady Design, and we want to thank you for your efforts in providing that. It will show you the continuous loop of all of the different people that were involved in this event this evening. We also want to recognize Joan McGill, ADC of Sarasota, and Dr. Catherine Wallstrom from New College of Florida. It is through the incredible work of Catherine, Katie to us, 
and her colleague, Jeannie Viviani, for this event. They helped put together the logistics, the science, and the invitations, and it's just been a delight to work with them. And so in recognition of their superb effort, we would like to recognize them with a bouquet of flowers. If both of you would please come forward. They didn't count on that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my esteemed honor to introduce the scientific co-chair of BioFlorida Sarasota Bradenton, James Humphrey Ross Camp Institute. Jamie. He says all those nice things about me, but the real driving force behind this chapter is that guy there, Michael Van Bussel. The importance of tonight's event is that the students, the education system, are the future driving force of the industry. They're our future employees. Not many students get the opportunity to interact directly with the business world. Hopefully this event tonight, academic can meet business and from there take the next step in partnering. I highly recommend all businesses out there, think about the internships. There's some tremendous students that are extremely talented and I can tell you from the Ross Camp Institute's point of view, some of our best students come from local institutions, have gone through the associate's degree at State College of Florida, come through New College or University of South Florida, and end up at the Ross Camp Institute doing their PhD. If we can keep the talent local, we all win. I implore you all to think about, can I take an intern? And if you're a student, you shouldn't be waiting for a, a lecturer to tell you, oh, I need to, you need to send your seat, uh, resume off. Think, what can you do? Be proactive. I'd like to thank everyone for supporting tonight's event. I encourage everyone to attend the BioFlorida meetings. It is a great chance to network. There are some incredibly ta talented people locally. There's nutraceutical, pharmaceutical, medical device, um, regulatory people locally. All sorts of things, everything the industry needs. You do not need to go shopping for your talent in the Northeast. It's here and local. So again, support your local industry and thank you all for coming out tonight. And now I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Stephen Miles, Provost, New College. Good evening. It's really a pleasure and my honor to welcome you this evening uh, to the Charles Ringling Mansion. We refer to this as College Hall. Um, this is what part of our Bayfront campus. Um, it's a real honor for me to be the provost of New College. Um, we are, as you can see, the Honors College of the State University System. Honors College here means, among other things, it means that every one of our students completes a senior thesis before they graduate. They have to complete that thesis and defend it at a baccalaureate examination. Now, we as a public institution, our tuition is relatively low. Um, many of our students are on Pell Grants. We take students who come here because they're motivated, they're academically gifted, and then they benefit from the mentoring of our faculty. Our natural sciences division particularly has been uh, tremendously productive. Um, in terms of its graduates going on to distinguished positions. Um, in fact, in looking at the state university system as a whole, New College ranks second only to the University of Florida in the percentage of its graduates who are in STEM fields. It's very, very important, and certainly as Jamie was saying, in terms of the resource that we offer to the community, please bear that in mind. Um, so there is a path that our students take from being first-year students 
all the way to the point where they're able to write a senior thesis and in some cases go to graduate school, many cases go to graduate school, but in other cases to be able to seek employment in this area. One of the things that we've realized in recent years um, is that that process of mentoring students is something we don't do alone. If we only rely on the resources of New College of Florida, um, we are, if that's one thing. But when we are connected to State College of Florida, connected to the University of, Sarasota, University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee, to other institutions in this area, uh, the resources for students and faculty go up tremendously. And I think we're at a special moment in the life of this region when all of the institutions, both educational and also in the business community, are realizing that it's not so much about trying to get a piece of the pie, it's about growing the pie. And we grow the pie when we work together. So thank you very much for coming. And I want, it's now my privilege to welcome Katie Wallstrom, who in many ways embodies all the values of great new college teaching. Katie Wallstrom. So it's my great pleasure to introduce all the new faculty members that we have in the area. First, I'd like to introduce Dr. Christelle Bouchard, who is a visiting assistant professor, and she's teaching biology at USF Sarasota Manatee, and she is a poster. Christelle, are you here? She's waving up here. Um, so she just started at USF Sarasota Manatee. She obtained her MS and PhD degrees from the University of Montreal, and she studies the neurobiology of marine invertebrates, and her research specialty is Cynardians, which are jellyfish, coral, and sea anemone. And she has previous teaching experience from Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, and also Florida State College at Jacksonville. Next, we have Dr. Jane Gardner, who is an, an assistant professor of biology at New College, and she also had a poster here today. She, she's waving up here. So Dr. Gardner attended McGill University and Boston University, and then received her PhD from USF. She did her postdoctoral work at Moat Marine Lab, and Dr. Gardner specializes in sensory biology and behavior of fishes. And so she focuses on multi-sensory integration where fish and sharks integrate all kinds of sensory information to um, modify their behavior. And we have Dr. Emily Saarinen, who's also up here. She had another poster. She's an assistant professor of biology and environmental studies at New College. She uh, received her bachelor's degree from New College and then her PhD um, at the University of Florida. And she did postdoctoral work on sturgeon and also um, studied climate change effects on marine species. And she came to us from the University of Michigan at Dearborn. And right now, she, her current research specialty is in studying um, endangered butterflies, including the marine blue butterfly. And we also have Dr. Christopher Frost, who is, uh, who is over here. He received his, uh, he's in his visiting assistant professor of biology at New College. Um, he received his undergraduate degree from New College also, and he earned a master's degree from the University of Florida and a PhD from the University of Georgia. And Dr. Frost is a plant biologist, and he's interested in the chemical and molecular basis of plant stress responses to environmental variation. In addition to all these new faculty we have here, also USF Sarasota Manatee recently hired many new uh, faculty for their biology program, including Dr. Talong, Dr. Caswell, and um, Dr. Banner. And we have Dr. Jane Rose here, who's the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences from USF Sarasota Manatee, and it's great to have her here. And Don O'Shea, the president of New College, was here. I don't know if he's still here, but you may have talked to him. He's still here. So um, welcome. We're really thrilled to have all these great new scientists in the area. Um, I also want to emphasize how all the interconnections we have between the different schools. We have presentations here from both um, uh, K through 12 schools and also uh, State College, and um, we have a lot of, uh, we bring a lot of students from State College to New College, and then our students go on to USF or on to Ross Camp. Um, and Stephanie Morgan is a great example of a student who came from State College to come to New College this year. So welcome. I think the next person is Nancy Bryan, who is the president of BioFlorida. Well, it's great to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. Um, first, it is my pleasure to thank Michael and Jamie and the rest of 
the BioFlorida Sarasota Bradenton Chapter Leadership Team for an outstanding effort in organizing the very first Biotech Expo in this area. So let's give them all a round of applause. The, the turnout is so impressive that I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying that I think we've created a tradition and I look forward to many biotech expos to come. So for me, the success of this meeting demonstrates that the life science community in this area is thriving. And when I say community, I'm talking about public education, um, universities, research institutions, emerging companies and established companies, all of which are key components to facilitate the growth in this area. And guess what? They're all right here. You don't even have to leave this area, this paradise that we have. Um, second of all, I would like to thank our prestigious speakers, um, Dr. Steve Miles and Catherine Wallstrom. And I want to thank you for both encouraging and mentoring really tomorrow's innovation. So let's everybody give them a round of applause. Third, I would like to thank our scientists from both the academic setting as well as private industry, all those people who authored this these posters and actually conducted the research. Want to know that we're behind you and rooting for you um, to have the next successful breakthrough and make a significant difference in the lives of patients everywhere. So thank you very much for that. Give yourselves a round of applause. Fourth, I th think it's very appropriate to thank all our sponsors and a big shout out to our host, New College. Um, it is your support that enables us to mobilize the community like this. So thank you very much for all your efforts. And last but not least, what I would also like to thank everyone here who's in attendance because it's because of your passion and commitment that you can help Bio Florida in its efforts to advance the life sciences in, in this area. So thank you very much. All right, with that, I would just like to give an update on the upcoming conference that we have. For those of you who are, are not aware of the conference, it's scheduled to take place in Fort Lauderdale in October 12th through the 14th. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to encourage everyone um, to attend and if possible to register and you can register online. For those of you who are not aware, this is our biggest and most prestigious event of the year. We actually have about 500 people that do attend this event, and it's, it's, it's truly a statewide conference. Um, what's so exciting about it is that we have the opportunity to bring together scientists, business, as well as public policy throughout Florida. So, what you see at the conference are scientists, executives, investors, public policy, and legislators, excuse me, and they represent all facets of the business. So university research institutions, small companies, large companies, um, and everybody engages. The whole goal of the meeting this year is really to present current issues in the industry, and we focus on the different segments of the life sciences, so that's biotech, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and bioag. And our whole goal is, is really to focus on the strengths of Florida. Together, we need to understand how we're going to leverage the life science assets that we have and grow them throughout the state. There's other things that we like to accomplish during the meeting. 
and that is first to celebrate the achievements of the year. You'll, you'll see at the meeting we, we, we have awards and everybody here votes for those awards. So there's a BioFlorida Award, there's an Entrepreneur of the Year Award, there's a Company of the Year Award, a Legislator of the Year Award. So um, the other things that we do during this meeting is we develop legislative priorities and this is important. This is the first time we're doing it in person at the big conference. And the reason why this is important is that we want to proactively define for our legislator how we think we can grow our own industry. And then we can put the resources to doing that. So we need all your help and contribution to make that happen. Thirdly, we provide opportunities for companies, so small companies, we actually provide the opportunity that, for them to present their business plans and requests for financing to a panel of investors, so both venture capitalists as well as angel investors. And we also celebrate and recognize the more established companies. Um, we call it a focus on innovation. Um, so it gives them an opportunity to tell their stories so other can, others can learn from it. Um, the, the last two objectives we have for the meeting, one is a one-on-one -on -one partnering, and that's where you can set up meetings um, with people to, uh, to actually establish those relationships that you need to be successful. So they may be research collaborations or partnership um, or even in licensing or out licensing deal. But that's all done in the back rooms of, of the conference. And last but not least, we make it a big networking event. So there'll be receptions and lots of opportunities to meet other life science professionals within the state. So I, I wanted to give you an idea of, of, of the agenda. So the way it's set up is that we have a general session and then three different tracks. Um, so in the general session, we're featuring um, real leaders within the Florida community. So we, we start off with explaining what the life sciences are in Florida. And to do that, we have Mark Wilson, who heads up the Florida Chamber of Commerce. And then we have um, other dignitaries in the state, like Lee Evans from Bristol Myers Scribb. And we have uh, the president of Medtronic um, Latin America speaking about medical devices and the value of Latin America market to, to Florida. So that just gives you a feel. Something that may be relevant to everybody in this room is we're doing a university panel where we have three university presidents discussing their vision for, for increasing the research and discovery um, in the university setting. So that should be very interesting. We also have a panel of entrepreneurs. These are people that started small and made it, and they've all made it within Florida. So that just gives you a flavor. I could talk forever about this, as you can see. The three tracks um, are the bioscience track, biotrends, and biobusiness track. So what we try to do here, again, is to emphasize the area where Florida has um, an advantage and has significant work going on. And we don't just highlight one region. In every one of these panels, you'll see uh, folks uh, from across the state who are leading the way in these areas. So for example, you know, we focus on Alzheimer's and you'll see that Ross Camp um, is, is going to partake in that panel. Um, we talk about um, anti-infectives and, and some of the interesting research that we have in actually going on in this area for new antibiotics. Um, and then we have biotrends. So biotrends, what's the, what, what can Florida leverage? There's Latin America, there's um, medical tourism. So there'll be a focus on each of those I areas as well as you know new trends in cancer treatment and what we call next generation technology. So where is technology leading that and what is that impact going to have um, in, in the medical field? Um, and then for, for the businesses uh, folks with us, we actually have um, some uh, a session on funding. Um, everybody's always interested in how they can um, fund their organizations to success. We also have com a commercialization panel. What do you need to do from pre-launch all the way to post-launch, um, as well as a corporate strategy. So anyway, a very, very comprehensive program. 
And j just give me a show of hands. Does, does this look like it's something interesting? Um, you know, do, do people think that they might try to attend the meeting? <laughs> I'm going to hold all of you to that. So, so, so anyway, um, thank you very much again. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm going to turn it over uh, to Michael to close out the meeting. Thank you, Nancy. She, she gets these things just a little bit lower than they need to be. <laughs> well, we want to thank everyone for coming this evening. We'll be wrapping up here very quickly. I also want to thank Ann Levengood and Megan Orlando. They have uh, been our welcoming committee at the sign-in table of every one of our events, and we love their determination and their commitment. And I think that uh, there's been at least one internship that has come out as a result of that uh, involvement. So it pays to get involved with BioFlorida. Along with that, we, we want you to go into the tables where our exhibitors are uh, showing. And you need to understand the role of about 11 companies in our organization who are preferred vendors and provide preferred member benefits. Let's take Fisher. Fisher Scientific. They have three tables here with their related businesses. And as a preferred vendor, they offer a purchasing discount. I believe it's approximately 15%. They offer free shipping. They offer a number of other fees that are weighed that as a startup company are remarkably meaningful. They also offer to a new startup company a $25,000 line of credit. Going to Fisher, you wouldn't get that unless you're a member of BioFlorida. And we have 10 other companies that offer preferred vendors a discount or preferred service. So take a look at the BioFlorida website, and we encourage you to explore it. And we ask you to consider becoming a member of BioFlorida. And we ask you to get involved. We are going to be holding events in the future that feature on financing for startup businesses and new products. We're going to be featuring uh, John Hopkins, All Children's Hospital, as one of our new events. And so next year is going to be rich with a great agenda. We welcome you to get involved. So again, I'd like to recognize all of our vendors, all of our exhibitors, and all of our sponsors. And again, I'm going to read them off one last time, and then we'll adjourn. We have New College of Florida as our host. I think they deserve a round of applause. This is beautiful. You have Bright House Networks, and you're going to hear more about them, because they have a new STEM competition at the high school level that will be becoming a national competition throughout the Bright House Networks, and they're going to be getting involved with BioFlorida to help promote that. We also have the Bradenton Kiwanis. We want to thank them for their strong support. Again, Lakewood Ranch Commercial Realty, Jantz Immigration Law Firm, and last, DPR. We build great things. We stand adjourned. Tonight we held the Biotech Expo at New College, attracting over 200 people for them to learn more about the businesses and life sciences in the area and the remarkable robust infrastructure for education in the Sarasota Bradenton area. STEM programs are strong in this area and they're discovered all the way from beginning of K through 12 up to a PhD level. Well, a little known fact that came discovered today is that you can attend the STEM program in Sarasota Bradenton all the way through from K through 12 through a PhD in this area and never leave the area. One of the other features of tonight was introducing nine new members of the faculty to PhDs that are going to be helping train the new workforce for life science in this area. BioFlorida has hosted this organization and they also announced the state conference on October 12th to the 14th in Fort Lauderdale. Over 500 people attend, and many of the companies that are found in Sarasota Bradenton will be featured. So we encourage everyone 
to attend the state conference and stay tuned for more events here in Sarasota Bradenton. Thank you.